everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Going Through the Dice Down Library Shelf by Shelf. And today we're at Shelf 4B. Now this shelf is, as if you remember when I talked about Shelf 4A, this is another kind of mishmash. But we have some hot, hot games here, folks. And some games you might not have heard of. The first one is Abomination. Now this is not a game I'm a huge fan of, mostly because I think it's way too long and it's a little dark for me, but I know a lot of people like it. And I bling this one out. Uh, this one that you are all a bunch of Dr. Frankensteins building the monster, who in my game I always call the monster Frankenstein. Um, and that's what you're doing. You're building a monster and you want to be the first one to do so. And it's a, it's a very strong Euro game that a lot of people like. Woodlands next to it looks like a children's game feels like a children's game, but I think it's more than that, which is why I stuck it in the library. Uh, in this game, you are doing different things on transparencies, trying to move through fairy tales, but you're drawing on a transparency, and then you'll place it on top of the board to see what actually happens. There's actually several games like this in existence. This is one of the better ones. This is one a lot of people haven't heard of, but again, I think it's because marketing-wise, it looks like a kid's game. We got two copies here of Seven Wonders. We have the expansions here in the library. This is the brand new second edition of Seven Wonders, which kind of looks like the first edition, but blacker. You know, the, there's a lot of text and they, they change the cards and uh, the graphic design slightly. But this game very popular, which is why there's two copies in the library. Moving on to Robinson Crusoe. If you're ever at one of my conventions and you're feeling really good about your day and you need a bit of a downer, play this game because it will smack you around and spit you out. It is a very difficult cooperative game, but there's a lot of cool things and I have some upgrades in that box, so check it out. Automania is a game that doesn't look, I mean, look at that box. I wouldn't pull that off the show, but it is a fantastic game, folks. Uh, this is a, a game about where you're building cars you're running them through assembly lines, scoring points. As you do so, you can build a car in the first turn. It's a game that just starts you off. It's a solid worker placement game. It's a very impressive game. Domain. Now, Domain has some nostalgia to me, but it's a very solid game. It is Claus Teuber's best game. And yes, I know he invented Catan. But Domain is a vicious area control game where you're building fences around your little domains and um, trying to take over everybody else pushing into them with a nice card play, card pooling system that this game holds up today in 2021, even though it's been out for 20 years. Agizia, Shifting Sands. This is the upgraded version of this, the Stronghold printing, some really nice production values in there. It has your, this is one of those games where you can go as far as you want down the river and come back. Really solid game. I never played the original version, so I can't really compare them, but I was pretty happy with this one. Roll for the Galaxy. Uh, for me, this one slides a little bit less than Race for the Galaxy, but it, that is a measure of degrees. Roll for the Galaxy, where you roll dice, use those dice to build a tableau of planets and technologies in front of you. Really cool. It comes with a kabillion dice in there. Just an excellent game. If you like Race for the Galaxy, you probably like Roll for the Galaxy. And if you don't like Race for the Galaxy, you still might like Roll. I find this one to be a little bit more accessible. Speaking of accessible here, Mice and Mystics here. Everyone likes that game. If you like story adventures, this one here where you are shrunken to a mouse and then they promptly forget that part of the story and you just act like a mouse the rest of the game. Uh, but you go through, if you want to play a dungeon crawl with families, this one's there. But I think adults could play this one together and enjoy it also. Panic on Wall Street is a very weird game, but I have it in here because it could be played at conventions. This is one of the few games that goes to 11. No, I'm not talking about a stupid rating system. I mean that you can play this game with 11 people. Uh, you, half the people, or more than half, are bankers. The other half are selling properties. And you're just going back and forth. It's a real-time, crazy, nonsensical game that somehow works. There's two winners, one from each half. Each group is competing with each other, but they're working with the other group. I really enjoy this. You want to collude with your spouse? This game will allow you to do so, and I won't even get upset over it. Exoplanets. This is a, wow. Oh, this is a game about space that I thought was pretty decent, and now for the life of me, as we're talking about it, I can't remember much more than that. I'm sure you're seeing a picture right now, and ooh, that's neat, and there's planets and stuff, and yeah, this doesn't bode well for it staying in the library, does it? Okay, Esteril, 1942 Superbox. This is a pretty cool spy game set, you know, just 
in the middle of World War II in Spain. It's fairly abstract. You're placing spies around the board in different spots. It's placing tiles. It almost has some shades of Naroshima Hex in it to some degree, uh, where you place tiles and then see what happens. I'm pretty impressed with it, and this is a really nice version that includes expansions. Menorah is a cooperative dexterity game that many people, Z's a big fan of it. I found it to be okay, but I also have klutzy, big, fat fingers, so maybe that's what it is. Or maybe I don't want to cooperate. I don't know. Either way, it didn't strike a chord with me, but I know a lot of people enjoy it, so that's why it's there. But it pales. No one can even look at Minara when it's sitting next to Summoner Wars, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, two-player game ever made. Uh, this is the second edition from Plat Hat Games. I'm really pumped to see more of this as it comes out. That set right there comes with six very distinct, unique factions. If you never played Summoner Wars, you must. It is amazing and terrific, and that's why it's in the library. And there you go. That's another shelf here, folks, in the library. Obviously, my favorite game on this particular shelf is Summoner Wars. What's yours? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been going through the Dice Tower Library together with me. Woohoo! <laughs>